Now, one of the most influential contributions to author-based research in, tw in the 20th century is the work of Peter Halberg, a major Swedish scholar, a professor at the University of Gothenburg. Uh, can you explain to me Halberg's most important research questions and the methodology he used? Yes. So, Halberg was, as you say, a great scholar and I think anyone who uh, reads his work will come to appreciate his keen eye for detail, for stylistic detail, uh, and his understanding of the text he was uh, studying on many levels, and also his almost superhuman patience for collecting data. So while well, we can n now do the things Holbrook was doing quite easily, well most of them, uh, by having a, a computer count out uh, the number of words or phrases for us, Halberg was doing this all by hand, and nevertheless he, uh, he did do quite a lot. Mm. <laughs> so his uh, most famous research question was on the authorship of uh, Eil Saga, and that was his first foray into stylistic studies and authorship studies in, in Old Norse. Um, the, the, the idea that Snorri Sturluson composed uh, Eil Saga is an old one, it stands from the 19th century, and uh, has had many proponents, and ha had had many proponents when, when Halberg came to the field, but Halberg wanted to try to prove this. So he wanted to test the hypothesis, put the hypothesis to a stylistic text. So what he did was, he compared Heimskringla to the five big sorts of uh, Icelandic saga, sagas of Icelanders, so Njál saga, Erbikja saga, Lagstál saga, Gretti saga, and Eil saga. And he operated on the assumption that Heimskringla was certainly a work by Snorri Sturluson and he wanted to measure in some way uh, the stylistic affinity between Heimskringla and the, the five uh, big sagas of Icelanders. So he proceeded by developing a method called the uh, pair word method and a pair word in Halberg's uh, theory is a word that is found in Heimskringla and in one of these five big sagas of Icelanders, but not the others. So the pair words are, relative, are relatively rare words. Uh, they only occur in two out of the uh, six texts he was studying. Now, furthermore, uh, he split Heimskringla into two parts and uh, tried each part separately and uh, came to the same conclusions with both. Now, and his conclusion was that Heimskringla shared more pair words, more rare words, uh, with Eilsa than with uh, any of the other sagas of Icelanders, in fact, far more. And his argument was that th this uh, was strong evidence for the, the same person having composed uh, mm. both texts, Heimskringla and Eilsa. Halberg's um, research has not been without criticisms, and uh, uh, there were some scholars, well, in the 1960s and 1970s who um, were skeptical about his results. What are the limitations of this method? Yes, the method has definitely some limitations. Uh, for one thing, he was only looking at a small number of texts. Um, so you might argue, perhaps, it is a coincidence that uh, Eilsa happens to be close by this measure to uh, Heimskringla. Many scholars were um, skeptical of Halberg's uh, statistical methods and uh, you must keep in mind that not all scholars in the humanities are comfortable with uh, <laughs> Certainly uh, not. statistical arguments. Yeah. And so, so one problem with, uh, with this comparison is that the five sagas which Halberg was comparing to Heimskringla are all of different uh, lengths. So Erbikja is rather short, but Njál, Njál saga is much longer. So how do you control for this? You, you would expect uh, the longest text to have the most pair words or rare words, and the shortest text to have the fewest. And so to, to correct for this, Halberg sort of assumed a simple linear model. He, he just uh, used the length of the saga to adjust his numbers. Number. So he operated with adjusted number of pair words. And some scholars have argued that uh, this method was too uh, simple, not sophisticated enough to uh, deal with the problem. Um, I think personally that it was sufficient to the task, 
but it is true that you, you could have a more sophisticated approach to this. Mm -hmm. Now you have uh, revisited some of Halberg's uh, problems in your own research. What, what are your um, results? Are they, are they similar to Halberg's? Um, have you found something new? Well, now we can do this so much more easily than in Halberg's day. So, and there exist, um, so when Halberg was doing this, he was developing the methods he was using as he went along. But now we have uh, n now this non-traditional authorship attribution or stylometry is a well-developed field of study. So we can deploy off-the-shelf methods and off-the-shelf software that have been uh, successful in other uh, fields uh, to the field of Old Norse literature. That is what I and others have been uh, doing recently. Uh, it is a fact that stylometry is uh, it, it's not just a guessing game. It is a method that can be verified. It, it it does work. You can use it with texts by known authors, and you will see that uh, it is an effective method to demonstrate that two texts are by the same author. So and I have done an experiment with this on a corpus of 19th century Icelandic uh, novels, and I was impressed with uh, how well the method performed. And then when I used it on First, the uh, same corpus which Halberg was working with, Heimskringla and the Five Sagas of Icelanders, I found, uh, like he did, that the stylistic affinity between uh, Heimskringla and Eirsa is much greater than between the other texts. And uh, the method I was using uh, deals with the most frequent words, so we can take the more 500 most frequent words or the 1000 most frequent words. And this is in contrast to what Halberg was doing. He was working with rare words and found much stylistic affinity between the texts. And I've been working more with common words, and I find the same results. And I think that uh, tends to confirm uh, that Halberg was on the right track with uh, Heimskringla and Eirsa are indeed strikingly uh, similar.